У меня еще сейчас я задаш. Hi, Dwayne. This is Worry. Are you there? What is the repo? Hello, Worry. This is uh, Dwayne checking in. How are you doing? Awesome. Awesome. I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. Um, so should we get started? It's uh, 9 uh, a.m. in uh, Eastern time and 9 p.m. in China. And uh, thank you all for being on time. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Muri. I'm the member of the Octopus uh, Network core team and the manager for the Octopus Accelerator program. Today, we're very lucky to have Dwayne as a lecturer on uh, Web3 fundraising. Dwayne is the founder of Big Brain Holding and a big supporter of the Octopus Network and, uh, and of the ecosystem. Uh, the format of today's lecture will be Q&A. If you have a question, please unmute yourself after the previous, previous question has been answered. Uh, please introduce yourself and ask one question at a time. Uh, before we get started with the questions, Wayne, would you like to say hi to everyone? Oh, just a uh, good evening, good uh, morning to all. Uh, really interested in, in hearing some of the questions you guys have, but also just learning more about your projects. So uh, thanks so much and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you, Dwayne. Now, everyone, it's your time to ask questions for Dwayne. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are very eager to uh, ask questions about fundraising from the conversations we've had privately. So now is your time. I got I got a question. Uh, my name is Winston with Impact, and uh, I'm curious how do you how do you usually convert a, a valuation based on traditional stock into tokens? Um, so let me just clarify. So you're basing the valuation that you're currently seeing from a Web two company in order into a web three company is, is that kind of what I'm, I'm following yeah yeah that's pretty much it a, a web two company where it's like equity and sh uh, shares and yeah like uh, one that's shares based um mm -hmm. to one that's tokens based yeah so um that that unfortunately isn't my expertise we, we do have a team that we reach out for that answers questions like that uh however just just in theory that the way you would base it is based off of your competitors based off of the revenue that you have um i would, I would say quarterly and then adjust that into um whatever because it, it can be one for one usdt or usdc so you could still have the same uh, valuation even though it's a convertible safe uh in token if that makes sense got you yeah thank you you're welcome. Okay, um, thank you for the questions. Uh, does anyone else have a question? I'm, I'm sure you guys all have questions. So just uh, when you have one, just uh, unmute yourself, make sure nobody else is speaking and then go ahead. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, my name is Varela from, from Impact. Uh, in terms of fundraising in the web free space, how do you see the dynamic and let's say the time frame? You should do this before that, especially when it comes to reaching out to institutional VCs and community VCs, as there are quite some clear dynamics between themselves in terms of who wants to invest first and who looks after that. So. How would you yeah. see a, let's say, best case approach towards community VCs and 
Absolutely. Uh, great question. So I think the first thing is to have as much of your finished project or product that you can uh, with the least amount of funds that you've had to uh, input into the project. So I think that that is something that the more you can show, obviously, the better that is from a VC standpoint, whether that's test net, whether that's demos, um, obviously having a, a pitch deck. So that's going to be the a pitch deck, any social media, whether it's uh, Twitter, link, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, uh, whatever it is that you can provide to VCs, whether it's uh, prints and newsletters, all these are going to help your case because you want to build a story of why should we invest into your company uh, at this stage in time, especially if it's a pre-seed or seed stage, the more that you can show um, use case application and scenarios, uh, the more likely that they can start to associate, okay, this is something that we can see you know, the community using, but also we can see that people would actually uh, value. So. Uh, that's those are a few things that I would have in line. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. So when when going towards VCs, okay, we have the institutional ones, the big ones that everyone knows about, and then you have community VCs, which basically act as DAOs. Um, and what I'm asking is looking at different projects. They uh, let's say they lock up a big institutional VC uh, as an investment, they put it on the website and use that to further go towards the community VC saying, hey, we're backed up by Animoca Brands or Sequoia, etc. Invest mm -hmm. in us because we're also uh, raising funds through, through you guys. However, uh, I'm, I'm curious of the dynamic there because if I were Animoca Brands, I wouldn't want my brand to be used as incentive for other players to basically invest because right now they have a lower risk because i invested already i'm a strong brand and people will just say hey animoca investors so i'll jump in so in, in terms of let's say like a time play who would you reach out forwards to first like institutional or you would go with community vcs and uh in this is another dynamic that i'm that i'm curious about well, it, it strictly depends on your project. So if, if you're a project that, um, that is going to need a market maker and you're going to need a Web3 support, then you would probably not be reaching out to traditional VCs that don't have experience in that nature. Uh, if you already have all those layers uh, in line, then you can just you know, choose to potentially raise from the, the Web2 side where you know, their checks are in their, their DD is a little different than Web3. So it, it really depends on the makeup of your project, the amount of resources that you have and experience in the Web3 community. But I, I don't think there's a, a right or wrong way, but it just, they, once again, it comes to strategy. Um, if, you're, if you're not going to need those certain players, then, you know, that, that's kind of up to your project. So it's, it's really a project basis versus just a rule of thumb. Mm, okay, gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I have a question. <coughs> sure. Oh, uh, so the question is like when when like uh, you see the way the way some VCs like to invest in companies incorporated in the um, in America. What of, of Web three companies? Because I've seen like ultra Web three companies. Um, I mean, the, the other session for the legal session. I understood why they, they also register in America, but I've seen most of them prefer first to register uh, in other countries, more so offshore ones, uh, where the regulation is a bit less strict. So do VCs like, are there VCs who just like, they, they don't uh, put the priority, they, they can invest in a company that is not even registered in America? Uh, that, that is correct. Uh, I would say that because the regulations that majority of the uh, Web3 companies that people invest in overall are probably going to be more so um, either BVI or foreign entities. But uh, I think for the purposes of, of just the conversation, though, I think that the, the focus should be geared more towards how can, how can we help your projects get, get other VCs excited about what you guys are doing? And then the steps that go into fundraising, um, I, I think... 
and sorry, just just throwing it out there, but I think that if we start to take those types of steps, then maybe we can. Um, we can make this a, a little more in insightful. Um, if you guys agree, if you disagree, keep on throwing them out there. But I don't think that's something that you necessarily have to worry about so much. I understand. I understand. Ah, thank you. You're welcome. Don't be shy. Any any questions? A good question. Uh, there's some uh, questions inside the chat. I think some people oh. are placing some in there as well. Perfect. Um, Let me go into the chat and check it out. I have one. Okay. Okay. There is a question from DC. Uh, thank you. What are the key metrics that Web3 investors are looking for? So definitely uh, uniqueness. Uh, I, I Oftentimes there's, you know, there's several different, we'll just say DEXs, for instance, on a certain chain and implementing an, another DEX or onboarding another DEX on the chain doesn't really get investors excited when you're maybe tweaking one or two things, but it's really not going to push the needle. So uh, uniqueness. And then I would also say um, a value. So how much value is it going to bring to the ecosystem if you're in a, let's say, a, a up and coming gamify ecosystem and you have a game studio that is going to onboard several different projects? That's probably going to be pretty attractive to VCs if it's done right. You've got the right team in place. Uh, that'll be able to execute and connections to make it really uh, successful. Um, and then another is valuation. So in learning what the valuation is on your, you know, you have to see the competitive landscape, but also see where things were at and where things are, are going. Um, so that way you don't overvalue yourself and then delay your raise. So a lot of times right now we're seeing valuations starting to come down a little bit, but um, they're still inflated and therefore VCs are less likely to uh, invest right away um, because of the opportunity for that valuation to, you know, to make a profit overall for everybody. And let's see, Winston has a question as well. What would you say is the key difference between pursuing money from Web 2 to Web 3? Web 2, from what I've seen, uh, they like to invest a little. Oh, somebody just mute there. Sorry, do I, I, yeah, I just muted it. Okay, awesome. Uh, web 2 to Web 3, so biggest difference I would say is that um, typically what I've seen is in Web 2, a lot of the institutions uh, they want to invest later, later in the round. So they want to invest in once the product is pretty much finished. Because you've got to think of the Web2 mindset is uh, typically you have something to show versus uh, Web3. A lot of times it's speculation leading into it. Um, that would be, you know, that would be one of the key differences, I, I think, is you once you reach out, you're going to have to show kind of here's what we've done, uh, whether it's getting to mainnet um, or having uh, several examples of here's what we've done and here's kind of the the money we've made um, for our company uh, during this time period. And what are investors from Web3 looking for? Everybody's different. Big brain holdings overall, we like to be early. We like to invest in pre-seed and seed stage. So, um, you know, we, we like to see that they're definitely uh, the teams at Testnet. They've got a, a unique uh, project that, that's definitely going to add value to the ecosystem. They've got uh, key team members with, with good pedigree, um, but also, um, you know, like I said, uh, a fair valuation for everybody. But that, that changes from investor to investor in Web3. And looks like Marilyn has a question that states, uh, could you share a template that uh, we can educate to start up, send angel investors? I mean, um, is there a template? I can look for one. I, I guess it would be more so maybe like a, 
a pitch deck that you can send to angel investors, uh, I'm assuming, but I'll yeah, don't worry about this one way. Uh, okay. <laughs> I've been looking for it. So yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and I'll send it to you guys. Yeah. Very cool. Um, but no, those, those are the questions so far on the chat. Feel free to, um, if you'd like to post them there and you don't want to ask them out, out loud, that's totally fine. Yeah, I think Nico is from Rebaked has a question. Okay. Thank you, Woody. And thank you for your time and being with us today. Um, I wanted to check, uh, based on the latest discussion that we had, that uh, a lot of investments in the Web3 are coming from the speculation in the early rounds. And of course, everyone wants to participate in the pre seed and seed rounds. Uh, I wanted to check if this, let's say, speculation or us to participate in those rounds maybe lead projects to raise more funds that they need. And at the same time, if it makes more challenging for projects that are able to deliver later on to raise funds because they are not appealing anymore, you know, after we pass the very early stage. And I'm curious for projects that they have already tokens that are trading, um, if there are any mechanisms, you know, to raise funds or what's the best way to slowly liquidate it uh, in the market. Obviously, uh, as soon as long they, they have tokens and enough resources to keep them going, they don't have to sell. But uh, yeah, what, what's the best? No, I, so I, I would say it, once you have a token already set up, then it becomes more it, a lot more harder because they can either choose to just purchase off the token or not. So at that point, I think it, it does become a little more challenging. Uh, I would say that it, if you've reached a place where you're further down the line as far as a, a completed project, that's where you start to at least put together numbers of what you've been able to achieve. And I would, I would focus on marketing that as well as the potential if you had more resources to therefore you know, increase your reach or add on more of your team. So th those are kind of the things that I would focus to get more people excited about it, but then also um, continued partnerships. So after you've launched uh, a project and there's potential for you, know, you to connect with other projects in, within the ecosystem that'll better position your project, I, I think that I would then, um, I would then do that uh, and make sure you emphasize that, but also make sure you, you tell the community of why you did that. So I agree. hope that, it, hope that uh, helps. Definitely it helps. I uh, had a pretty similar understanding and point of view, but yeah, thank you for validating uh, my thoughts. You're very welcome. Thank you for your question. Next up, uh, we question. have uh, Daniel. Uh, please go yeah, ahead. thank you. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for coming here and uh, sharing your immense knowledge with us and answering our questions. Um, I have a question in terms of, it might be a newbie question. Um, we have a project that's like a startup startup. Four of us will have a great idea. And uh, I've heard what you said, right? So uniqueness is definitely something that has to be a part of your project in order for, for the project to get money. Um, but I've seen, I mean, we, we've all been looking at the projects that get money and some of them uh, get it on the idea stage uh, and not like some money, but they get like millions and other guys get all the way up to uh, an MVP or better and then they get uh, money. So what gives? And I've heard what you said right now. You said, okay, so it's better to do it before you set up a coin, before you uh, get to that later stage. Um, but if you are at the startup stage where we are, uh, and let's say we think that uniqueness is covered, what else needs to be present uh, in order for us to have a chance? Uh, or how do we position ourselves uh, in front of the, the VCs to even be considered? Since we don't really have much to prove except for we have this great idea that we think is gonna work. Right, so I, I think that the, the first thing I would do is I would map out which VCs that you uh, want to contact or get connected with. And, um, and then I would be marketing uh, my project 
because you can market an idea and get people excited about it. And then when it comes down to discussions and the technical part, that's when you have these calls with VCs and they'll either choose to invest or not. But you definitely, uh, you've got to market and, and give them a reason why they want to invest with you, right? So I think that's super important is marketing. And then it's it's networking. You know, if, if you've, you've got a great concept idea, but if, if nobody knows about it and the right people don't know about it, then you're just going to continue just having a great idea. So uh, it's definitely, you know, grinding, hustling, connecting on the phone, uh, on Twitter spaces, uh, okay. IG. It's, it's doing all those and, and really just putting yourself out there. Okay. And in terms of AVCs, uh, the best way to sort them out is to see uh, what kind of, uh, I don't know, spaces they invest in, right? If somebody invests in DEXs, and if you are a DEX, it's better to go to them, right? If somebody invests in Gamify, then like that, right? This is how we kind of sort out who to go to. Absolutely. That would definitely yeah. be my focus because then you're, you're speaking their language and it's an, a right. much easier conversation. It's much easier to see your vision, especially on an early um, stage if, if they're already somebody who invests in that space. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. No, you're very welcome, sir. Next up, we have Jordi. Hi, I have a question about the regulation in United States. I, I talked with a one lawyer and he told me uh, USA citizens are not able to invest in crypto in whatever way, even a credit investor. This is true or what can I, how I can escape of this rule or what we can do for get money for, from an investor from the United States? Um, so I am not a lawyer, but uh, as an investor from the US, if you are investing uh, into something that, that has tokens, there might be certain securities and regulations that come into it. But um, I, I would save that question for, for a lawyer, but I, I know that you know there are people who invest from the US. Sorry, I can't answer that question. So even it's a private deal, I mean, it's a friend of, of mine who want to invest, but is the rule apply for, I need to do all this process, even if the people that you know well, because I, I probably would have investor that you don't know, but it's, it's, it's applied for all the United citizens. That's why, that's why I confuse it. I finished for uh, all, all the USA citizens, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, w I would check with a lawyer on that just because it gets into... Uh, legalities and uh, that's something that your your investor here the way that they set up their either their angel investor or their corporation that's going to have to be something that they're going to have to do so i can't give you advice on that unfortunately okay thank you you're welcome yeah marilyn you can post that question in the group chat remember gene i think you'll know what the answer is anyway okay. thank you for the question yeah next up we have jeremy please go ahead Hi, um, this is Jeremy from Metagames. Um, thank you for joining the call today. I got two questions that I hope you wouldn't mind ask me asking. The first one is, what are the typical exit strategies for VC firms in the Web3 space? And my second question is, um, what, what do you think is the hot, what's, what, like, what's hot in the market um, in 2022? Like, what are you seeing? changes and you know what what's are some upcoming projects you see that are very attractive to investors thank you sure you're welcome thanks Jeremy for your question so the first question um it it varies so once again uh, unfortunately there's there's not one uh, clear answer that every VC is going to exit uh, on the same some some uh, VCs depending on their position if they get in, in really early rounds, once their tokens are then accessible, uh, they might dump a portion. It, I think it goes to you know that firm's investment thesis and exit thesis. So uh, that's why in, in raising funds, it becomes even more important to get to know your VC's uh, theory behind um, projects and, and how they exit. Because ultimately, yes, you, you want to, um, you know, make the money, especially your early investors. Uh, but at the same time, you, you don't want them dumping on you. So 
that's going to be a question that you, that as you're going through the process, maybe you, you just kind of ask that in, in like a broad, uh, not attacking way, but just a broad, like kind of, you know, what are some examples of projects that you've invested in and how did you exit them? And so that way it, you can kind of get to know them a little better. Um, and it varies from our, from big brain holdings, it, it varies as far as what we do, um, you know, and a lot of the ecosystems we support, we um, invested into their seed rounds. So we're, we're long on projects and long on, on teams. So it's, it's very different than a lot of people. Uh, your second question, as far as- Do you as, guys look at like, uh, do you guys look at like hurdle rate or like any IOR return metrics, anything like that? Couldn't really hear your question. You're breaking up there, Jeremy, sorry. Sorry, um, I, I was asking if you guys look at like hurdle rates or any ILR return metrics. Uh, I mean, no, we, we definitely uh, look at all that and kind of see at the stage of when the, the token was released, uh, the, the price that we paid and, and we put all that into consideration. So uh, all that comes into the metrics as far as, you know, what we're going to do as far as exiting, but then also, you know, do we see potential for, you know, another raise where, uh, the valuation continues to increase and in that nature, you know, maybe it makes sense to stay in further into that investment. So, and then your second question, some of the things that we've seen that have been very interesting. Uh, I know the meta has been around a lot of uh, use case scenarios. So we had step in and then we've got several, um, several, I would say, uh, moved earns, uh, played earns uh, that are, are trying to, I think, uh, tokenize that segment in a long-term sustainable way. So we've seen a couple projects uh, that have come out that are that are pretty interesting. There's also a lot of these um, uh, game studios, I think, are, are going to be pretty interesting as well that we are seeing. And, um, and then we're, we're big on as far as like infrastructure, we're big supporters on, on infrastructure and, and the ability to, to have that be the staple of uh, the ecosystems that we're investing in. So those are some of the things that we've seen that are pretty interesting, but, um, you know, I'm always up for seeing something that kind of is outside of the realm. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Do we have any more questions for Dwayne? Leo? Yeah, from your experience, questions? yes, yes, I have one. Oh. From your experience, uh, what could be the quantity uh, approximately like a normally venture capital or angel investor uh, invest in for the first round in startup when they receive approximately for, for half a some numbers approximately about that? Just proceed is like a no no launch yet. Mm -hmm. So once again, it depends on your project. So if if your project um, is valued has a very high valuation and a high raise, and it warrants a let's say a higher pre seed, then you're going to that's totally up to your project. So can you give me a little more specifics about your project and and your valuation that you're thinking? I know I'm talking about range, range of, of about money because, for example, when I talk with VCs, they told me that the normal regular investment that they invest is seven million dollars, but they want to take the position, the take over the, the, the company, the startup. But when it's pre seed, was this angel investor? I want to say, I want to know what is the normal numbers. I mean, it's ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand. Five hundred thousand. So I want, I want, to, I want to know what is the normally investment or considered angel investor in in crypto world, because I don't have the right the the uh, the number approximately. Mm -hmm. so I don't wanna, I don't wanna see how oh, this is too much for normally for for for. Sure. Uh, for this is too low. I I want 
for my idea about the numbers. Okay, um, I, I would say angel investors could probably range uh, between 20 and 50K on average. I, I, I don't see them typically go too much over that. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this helped me a lot for have some numbers in, in and decide how, how could be the investment. And okay. normally he he wanna take in the first stage is approximately how 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 much is the market market cap or was that how how works this this part with the pre seed when when you just started? Right, so th that would be your team. So what I would do is I would I would get with um you, you know your CTO and have them kind of go over the financials of of what your team's looking to raise uh, runway. So since we are in a bear market, you want to make sure that you have enough runway uh, to support, you know, what you think, you know, the timeline could be uh, to the bear market uh, coming out of a bear market. So make sure you have that factored in. And, um, you know, there, there's not a, there's not a number, that, there's not like a million dollars for the pre-seed. Like it's, there's not a overall number because there's so much variation in projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's 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 project specific. So if you tell me what project you're making, and you compare it to what ecosystem that you're going to be launching on, then I could give you like a, a better uh, hard numbers than just kind of speculating and throwing a number out there. So okay, feel free to just you. you're, you're welcome. Just DM me if you when you have your project and and I can help you then. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. I have one more question, if that's okay. Oh, sorry. Of course. Um, I think uh, Zodi back over there is uh, in front of me. Yes, hello. Hi, and thank you for being here. I have a question. Uh, it's just an opinion of you. Uh, well, as your opinion, uh, where to better to register your startup company? And as an investor, do you look at this um, stage? Okay, let me see if I understand. So you're you're asking, what's the best place to oh, register? Yes, to register, yeah, business. And do you look at this when you invest your money to a startup? Um, I, I think in Web three, it's it's more so just to make sure that it is registered, and that the the company has, uh, you know, done their due diligence to make sure all their paperwork's together. So. Um, it, is, is there a BVI versus a foreign entity that's totally up to the constraints of your team? And, um, you know, that's that's specifically up to your team. So I, I wouldn't say that there's a, a better one way or another. Okay, thank you. And the next question is the last one. So it is okay to launch a product before the token because uh, we see how it is difficult and there are so many uh, stages to launch a token. So we have a product um, going to launch faster than a token. Is it okay? And it is better than a launching first token? I have seen that work out uh, better, obviously launching a project before your token, because if you launch a token first without your project being launched, it, it's kind of going backwards as far as what, you know, what people are, are investing in. So being able to show them a finished project or at least show them a project before launching a token uh, it makes sense to me but um you know i haven't seen it done the other way too often no yeah, okay okay thank you you're welcome um okay um so uh i have uh, a couple of questions really um is it, uh, is it a red flag? Uh, let's say uh, we started teaching VCs and we're starting to get some interest and in, let's say somebody invested in the project. Uh, is it a red flag for any future potential investors if they see that there is, a, well, let's say like a whale uh, with a huge allocation in, uh, in his hands? Uh, because obviously if he exits, uh, this will affect you know, many things like liquidity and, and so on. Uh, is it a red flag? Uh, if it is, how do you deal with it? And the next part of it uh, is 
the way we thought uh, we actually do think it's a red flag but we're not professionals so we thought that maybe it's a good idea uh, when you go looking for investments uh, limit the amount of investments that uh, you're looking for even though your valuation might be a couple of mil but you only limit uh, to 300 400 thousand from each uh, VC to make sure this way it's more evenly and fairly allocated and in the long run it doesn't it's not going to have any detrimental effect if things go south right so i i think it's super important a to um while you're picking your lead investor or your co-lead investor to uh, you know have have numbers in place that are either going to potentially uh, lock up their investment uh, a little longer um, or that you guys have a strategy when it comes to uh, investors into the round so that way there are they're basically ensuring that your project's going to be successful and it's going to hold some longevity I, I do like the fact that you um, you're able to kind of limit the uh, amount of money um, that one investor can uh, on take just so you can share around a the resources so a lot of these VCs can add value to the project in other ways other than just money and so that would be a question I would be asking is what types of added value can VCs add um, so that way you can better help your project and then also um, you know it, it becomes tricky in this market because of the way things are currently right now and mm -hmm. so um, you know it, you're going to have to kind of see a the runway and see what kind of investor you get big tickets from because you know it, it's it, it might be one of the things where it's best for the team to take a really large um, sum from one investor just based off of the current conditions. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just to, uh, to not be left. Not right. Be left. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Especially when you have somebody who believes in your project and, um, you know, maybe they're able to help onboard other VCs. So. Okay. Um, and also, I know that uh, the SAAS model for investment. Mm -hmm. Very, um, you know, it's it's pretty much the model that everybody uses in Web two. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that apply to Web three as well, or it's not as uh, prevalent? No, uh, actually, you no, know, it is prevalent. Uh, I, I do see uh, a lot of uh, firms do use that as well. So that's a good blueprint to just kind of look at as well. Okay, thank you so much. So You're welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Next off, uh, uh, Andy, uh, can you hold on to your question for just one sec? Because we have a few in the chat. Okay, yes, we, sure. We have yeah, from Winston. Yeah, just... yeah, okay. So I'm Andy. I'm from Lacra Studio. I would like to ask, what do you think about the right time for a project to release token? I mean, what is the indicators to look? Um, so it's a market conditions. So, you know, right now is a very good time to, to be building unless you have a lot of traction from other, I would say, uh, you know, people in the community or, or institutional investors. I, I would definitely say that, you know, now is a perfect time to be building versus launching a token. Although at the same point in time, if, if you see there's an opportunity to, to launch something that's unique, you might um, you might want to take advantage of doing that as well. It's just that it's just very it's been very hard if you don't have a lot of traction that I've seen from projects um, and launching a token at this point in time. So I'm not sure if that answers your question fully. Um, yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And just also, moving into the chat. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was just going to read you the question. What do you uh, What do you look for in move by projects when you invest? From Winston. Absolutely, Winston. So, I, I think the next step in that I've started to see is um, sponsorship from big brands that are that are coming into these move fives. Uh, that are that are now either marketing themselves, whether let's just say it's uh, it's Adidas or, or Nike that are getting involved in 
throwing some money behind uh, these projects. I think that that becomes very attractive seeing uh, Web2 marketing um, come into from these institutions gets, gets you pretty excited. So I, I would say that. So sponsorship from, from well-known and respected uh, names would definitely be something that I would be looking for. And then I would say uh, region-wise. So yeah, in Asia, I, I think that there's a lot more there's a lot more of the Moveify that I've seen that uh, could be very attractive. Whereas in the uh, the states, I think that they're they're still trying to get there. Um, hopefully, they get there sooner because uh, you know I think that kind of adoption is is definitely uh, very attractive. But it's also something that you know any everybody can partic participate in. So great question there. Uh, Jeremy has another. Thanks. What kind? You're welcome. What kind of common qualities do do I see in successful projects in Web three firms? I'd say passion. So I think if you are launching a project and you're on a call with an investor or potential partner in the ecosystem and you're not passionate about your project, then it's it's almost one of those. Well, if you're not going to be passionate about your project now, before you've launched, what's going to happen if you face some adversity uh, later on or things you have to pivot and change kind of direction so um you know having a team that's passionate having a team that um you know has some experience right so you, you want somebody who knows what they're doing they've got a, a, a concise roadmap of how they're going to execute uh, with different uh, markers in which they've been able to achieve or that they're they're going to have a check in place uh, and to achieve that and then uh, also we, we talked about a little earlier just uniqueness so you don't want to to launch the 15th DEX on a chain, probably not gonna be something that's gonna be very attractive for um, investors or just gaining, I would say market share uh, on that chain. You're, you're just limiting your opportunity. And, and then I would say also continuously building. So once you release your project, you know, can you make it better? Can you, you know, further, you know, can you further put your like, your, your stamp on why this project's really successful. Uh, we'll, we'll just go with like Netflix as, as like a quick example. Start off, you know, renting from, you know, grocery stores and then developed into now a streaming service. And now, you know, they're looking into getting into the game studio aspect of it. Um, you know, it just continuously evolving and, and recreating yourself. So I think that's what successful projects do. And then Alyssa has a question here. What does a Web3 due diligence process look like? And is it different from Web2? And does Big Brain Holdings usually take board seats? We typically don't uh, take board seats. I'll answer that question first. Uh, we just don't have the, uh, the time uh, to uh, allocate to going on boards typically. There are times where we will help advise projects. Um, typically that will just be silent advisors. We, um, don't take any uh, monetary funds from that. So we just like to help out the ecosystem. So we'll do that from uh, some gamify projects, some NFT projects where we'll help out. And then as far as it comes to Web3 due diligence, what does the process look like? And is it different from Web2? Um, I can't, I, 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 unfortunately I was an investor in Web2. So I, I, I can't, uh, I don't know what their, their DD was that they did, but um, I imagine it's, it's probably going to be pretty similar, um, both maybe a little less on the tech evaluation side, but um, that's just, you know, maybe that's just me throwing it out there since it's... And then also, Alyssa has a question, what is a reasonable amount of months of runway for a current economic time, this bear market that investors feel comfortable um, I would say 18 to 24 months is, I, I think, a, a very reasonable time to have funds kind of allocated for. That might be on the very conservative side, but um, personally, I, I would like to be a little more conservative than be at a place where you're having to raise additional funds because you did a much shorter uh, timeline.
And do you think the SaaS model will be prevalent long term or just short term? Uh, Dylan, I'll have to get back to you on that question. <laughs> it's a good question, though, but I'll have to get back to you on that one. And then, Victor, during the showcase, is it only the founder who joins the showcase or can other members join the showcase? That worry, that's a question for you, but I believe that everybody can join the showcase. But am I correct Absolutely. in that worry? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, anyone can join, uh, present during uh, the showcase day. And we've had non-founders present because of the language issue before. Yes. Um, no, great questions though. You, you guys, uh, there's definitely some great questions. If you guys have more, please feel free to throw them out there. I think we have a question from uh, Danae. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, Danae from For Protocol. I was just wondering how do, how does the market how do the market conditions affect the investment strategies of VCs? Sure. Uh, well, I, I would say the first is that they're they're less likely to invest in a project that they would in the bull market that would be profitable um, during those times. So I think that there's a lot of projects that um, were very attractive during a bull market because it made more sense and it would, they would more likely make money for the investor uh, in those terms versus uh, now uh, VCs are very um, cautious, I should say, with um, projects and teams that they're investing in. They're typically waiting for you know other type top VCs to get involved because uh, a lot of rounds aren't getting finished. Um, so I, I think that it's definitely in these market conditions, you, you, you kind of want to have a lot of momentum when it comes from a lot of VCs being interested in a project versus, um, you know, maybe one or two. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Next up, we have uh, Thura. So, like a Yes. Hello. Um, so, first of all, thank you so much for your explanation. I would like to ask uh, about uh, tokens. So, uh, what do you think about uh, getting angel investors before launching token? Um, so, should it be as token or shares? I would like to know your opinion or thoughts about this and maybe uh, about how to measure it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, <laughs> From tokens, uh, from our team, we, we definitely uh, like to invest into projects that have tokens or are going to release tokens. However, a lot of uh, VCs in this current environment uh, still, they, they would prefer the safe with a token warrant. So I think that as you're having these discussions with VCs, that would be one thing that I would ask is just kind of your preferred method of investing. And if you're continuously that's the last, you know, the reason why they're not investing is because it's either, you know, all tokens and, and no um, equity, then, uh, then maybe that's a decision that you and your team need to, to see if, if you really need to have one or the other. So um, that's a very good question, but um, those are kind of the questions I would definitely be asking investors uh, as you have these discussions. And sorry, your second question. All right, thank you. You're welcome, sorry, you had, you had another question though. I, I don't know if I answered it there. Uh, yeah, uh, the second question is actually how to measure it, how to... From a dollar perspective or from just the amount of tokens that you're going to, to uh, dedicate to your project? Yeah, more or less. Um, from a Dell perspective, maybe? Um, I, I don't know if I fully understand your question there, sorry. Okay. 
Worry, did did you get that one? I, I apologize, Worry. I, I... Uh, no, I I I couldn't hear it. Okay. Are... No. You... Yeah. If you want to put it in the chat, um, then maybe we'll we'll come back to it later on, or I can just DM you. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will I will I will put it put it in the chat first. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I think we have uh, just enough time for one more or one or two more questions. Um, I have a question. Oh, yeah. please go ahead. Um, hi, Brian. Um, first question. Um, when you say SaaS, are you referring to software as a service? I just wanted to be clear on that. And if you can give like a brief um, just overview of what that um, investment structure looks like. Um, and second would be um, with um, investors, um, have you ever worked on a model where it's um, part equity and part tokens? Um, and if that's a good strategy. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, SAFs would be tokens. So just uh, associate SAFT with tokens and then safe with equity. And then when it comes to your second question, the it, in this market, it, it definitely has been more attractive for, I think, a lot of VCs having a safe plus a token warrant. Um, but once again, I think the, the key thing is that you don't want to launch a token if it doesn't make sense. So if just to launch a token to launch a token uh, and not have any utility behind it is not going to be good for the project and and definitely not for the investors. So um just make sure that, you know, in the revenue uh, that you're going to be putting into the token, that it actually has a use case. So that's definitely important. But um, yeah, I think in the market right now, overall, it's probably more safe with a token warrant it has been a lot more attractive for onboarding the majority of VCs, even though um, our team specifically probably invests more into just token plays. Got you. Sorry, I thought he said SAS. It's not uh, SAFT or SAF. Got you. Got you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, I, I, I have a question. Uh, all right. Oh, the question was: Is um, how does dilution usually look like for uh, like precede and seed uh, crypto startups? Uh, what 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 percentage do uh, seed and uh, precede uh, crypto investors usually look for? So uh, it's, I mean, that number uh, can fluctuate. It, it depends on the project. So, you know, if you're investing into an L1, you're going to be looking at, at you're going to have very different uh, expectations than just a, let's say a single uh project AMM. Um, so um, that that question is a little hard to just generalize um, with the, with the, an answer there. Okay, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Um, la last question, Brian, um, George here from Remove DeFi. Um, when it comes to valuation, I understand valuation on a token basis, but what if the business, what if the company is a, is a real world business that has physical and like a physical establishment like entities? Mm -hmm. um, how do you factor that valuation into the project without um, with, try, with, with um, an overvaluation or having a really high valuation um, worry at the back of your mind, knowing that um, high valuations scare away investors, especially VCs these days? Yeah, I, I think one, one thing you do is you can get creative is if you know that the, the valuation is let's just say it's it's pretty high let's say it's it's 50 million dollars is the valuation is maybe in the the first initial pre-seed round you do a a lower raise so you do a lower raise amount and a lower valuation and then following the the pre-seed you go to the seed round and maybe you increase the valuation and increase the amount of um, money that you're raising and um, and therefore you're already providing value for your investors you may, you know, obviously in devaluing your, your company or project, you're, you're not going to have as much upside, but maybe you have more long-term investors and partners and a more stable project because you're able to, to get several different investors in versus 
potentially not having as many uh, at a higher valuation. So uh, these are all different strategies. This is something you definitely want to consult with your team, but at least it's good to know, you know, that these types of things have happened and they've been successful. So, um, but you, if, once again, you've got to see what's best for your team. Uh, can we send you a DM just for feedback? Sure. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Here's my, I'll put my Twitter handle on here so you guys can add me, DM me, and uh, we can either talk there or Discord. I do apologize because I do have a call that I need to get on that I push back. Um, but there is yeah. my... Uh, Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's all the time we have for today, guys. Uh, thank you, Dwayne, for your time, and thanks everyone for your questions. And I'll see you next time. And especially uh, thank you, Dwayne, for your time. Absolutely. Have a good day. And you too, Dylan. I'll get back to you on that question. So just see me, buddy. I shared my my Twitter sure. right there. And you're right there. All right. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.